Welcome to the Health In Show, an affiliate program of Homeopathy World Community. I'm your host, Debbie Brooke, founder of Homeopathy World Community Social Network. Today is June 25th, 2012, and I'm giving a big shout out to Professor Dr. Robert Brooke, who is my husband and the greatest supporter of Homeopathy World Community. He's always there in the background. Um, on all of the radio shows and all of the programs, uh, supporting, on uh, commenting, and applauding. I also am pleased to introduce today Dr. Nisanth Nambison of Bhopal, India, who is going to be our special guest talking about uh, sunshine and what problems the sun and the heat of summer can cause for people and animals as well. And don't forget to water your plants. I have brought with me a beautiful dahlia from my garden because it reflected the image of the sun. I'd also like to thank all of our viewers and listeners who love natural healing. If this is your first time here, you're, you might be hearing the voice of Amnon Nissan in the background give, giving us instructions to continue with our internet connection. So. I encourage everyone out there to share these shows on Twitter, Facebook, in your emails, blogs, and websites. If you'd like to comment, just get onto the network and put your name into the, into the chat area or call us on the telephone at 919-518-9773 if you're in the local area or via Skype if you are outside of the United States to Computers 2K Voice and that will be the phone number that we will be listening for you. Dr. Nambison, okay. Um, you are with us, but your screen has been frozen and, and we have lost connection. But we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna carry on. <clears throat> a cloudy day or a little sunshine have a great influence on many constitutions as the most recent blessings or misfortunes, says Joseph Addison. And so we must keep our face smiling. No matter what happens, we take everything in stride on these shows. Okay, so our regular co-host, Dr. Deepak Sharma, is on vacation. <clears throat> and we're hoping that our special guest, Dr. Nissan Nambison, who is an MD, gold medalist, MF home, and has, who has special interest in allergic disorders will be able to reconnect with his internet connection. Dr. Namison has many awards and recognitions to his name and is a well-known designer of the health and homeopathic computer programs to make diagnosis easier. He lectures widely at national and international conferences and teaches with the title of assistant professor, head of surgery and homeopathic therapeutics at the federal government run Homeopathic Medical College in Bhopal, India, the heart of India. So we're, I'm gonna just go ahead with our subject and we're, I'm gonna talk us through this and we're gonna learn as much as we can. When he gets on, he can either get onto the chat or try and get through via Skype. Basically, if you had been a sun worshiper and you know those silver, what do you call those things? Those silver trays that people would lie out at the beach and reflect the sun, tanning. To those tanning reflectors. Now I put them up on my screen and on my windshield and block the sun. Yeah. <laughs> We're using the same exact uh, reflective technique. And what has happened is uh, people who were in their younger years and did that to get that golden tan now have brown, dry, wrinkly skin that has aged much quicker than if they had protected themselves using umbrellas, keeping in the shaded areas of trees, using a hat, um, covering their body with some protection or using that zinc oxide on their nose. It might look funny to wear that white, but you know, it really protects you because how many people do you know have had skin cancer on their face from all of those burns, especially their nose? And that's where you would see those brown spots. It's really true. And homeopathically, one of the remedies that comes 
up is because of the basic principle of likes cures likes and the similimum, the remedy sol, S-O-L, which is in Latin, the sun, can often be used as a homeopathic remedy for this. Besides um, burns, if it's an immediate burn, we think about running and, and putting on cantharis or urtica orans or calendula. Um, it looks like Dr. Nambison has been able to reconnect, and we're going to ask him to tell us a little bit about the sun and the ozone layer, if his connection is with us. Are you able to hear us? Uh, can you repeat the question, please? Okay, the question is can all about... Today, you know, I mentioned that in the past, the sunshine, we would go out and sunbathe and drench and drink in that sunshine. But our atmosphere has actually changed from the time I was a little girl to now, uh, 60 years later. So um, can you tell us about the effects of the sun and what's happening to our atmosphere? Yes, uh, actually, as you uh, rightly said, the sun is very important for us, and our body uses the sunlight to synthesize vitamin D. But what kind of nutrition and carbon nutrition has done a lot of. Uh, what should we do? He can chat. You, um, you, you, if you get onto the browser, onto nissancommunications.com, onto the Health In Show, you are able to chat in there and, and send us your, your messages and your thoughts as I talk. Let, let, let's try one thing one first. More Dr. Namberson, go ahead and turn off, yeah. turn off your camera. You know, underneath it, on the bar, there is the camera. Click on the camera. Yeah. Now try and talk. Yes. So, am I audible to you? Yes. So, I was telling that because of urbanization, lots, lots of urban emission, the urban layer is reporting. No, no, it's, it's, not, it's not good. No. Okay. I will do my best to talk us through this. I uh, will give information, and if you have anything you want to contribute, you can put it onto the chat or even onto the Skype um, into chat. So uh, what we're doing is we're, we're talking about the effects of the sunlight and the problem that we have today with people who are uh, being diagnosed with all types of skin cancers. These are malignant growths that um, are not healing by themselves. We, they are tumors and they can appear on the epidermis, the, the outer layer of the skin, uh, though they can occur on other areas of the body, the, the, in, even inside the mouth, in the nose and the nail beds. The three most common forms of skin cancer are the basal cell carcinoma, BCC, the squamous cell carcinoma, SCC, and the other kinds of melanoma, regular melanoma. Melanoma is the least common of the three, approximately 5% of the cases, but also it is the most lethal, meaning that people actually die from getting skin cancer, which you might not think that that would happen, but it's true. And it is also the fastest growing, and once it does metastasize to other parts of the body, it is most frequently fatal. These kinds of cancers occur from chronic exposure to the ultraviolet radiation in combination with a person's genetic disposition. So some people can sunbathe and the sun, that is not going to affect them for their entire life. While other people, and we usually think about fair-skinned people like myself, um, who will very easily get a sunburn not having to be out in the sun for too long of a time. And, you know, it, when you, this is where we need to be most cautious because you go outside, you're working or you're having some type of recreation, you're going to the beach, 
you either fall asleep there and you by the time you go home everybody is checking their 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 bat, bathing suit straps and pulling down their uh, the lower half and and seeing that they are like a lobster beet red this is definitely a sunburn and we have to be careful dr. Nambison are you able to speak can you hear us uh, yes I can hear you and I can also speak but I'm not sure whether I'm audible. okay can you can you tell me um, if you if somebody walked into the clinic and they had this a demarcation of very bright red burning skin from the sun uh, from a sunburn is there something that you would do immediately yes if, if this kind of a patient comes to me then this is a case of the inflammatory reaction that our skin did when it is burned now in this case uh, there is a very good reason the belladonna Oh. And Belladonna is the remedy for skin burn if the patient comes to us immediately after getting his sunburn. And along with that, there is a Okay, I, I, I heard I heard you say I mentioned Belladonna for the for the bright red inflammation, which we can really understand. I'm wondering if there is some sort of a topical application that you would apply to the skin. Would you open a leaf of aloe? Would you um, use other homeopathic remedies? Yes, aloe is a very good uh, natural remedy that can be used. Uh, but uh, uh, along with aloe, I would suggest to take and apply calendula. Calendula is nice. Which one is that? Calendula? Okay, as a cream or as a gel or, or as a homeopathic potency yeah. in water? Uh, it is uh, better to go for a gel because it retains the water in the specific body levels. Uh, but if you can apply it directly from a teacher of calendula, that is also fine. Okay, so the mother tincture of, of belladonna, you said, would... Um, no, calendula. Uh, oh, of calendula. Calendula. okay, the mother tincture of calendula would be a good application. What I would be concerned about on the gels is if they have any alcoholic content. Is that still okay? Yes, it is still okay. okay. Because uh, alcohol uh, is an uh, antibacterial agent as well. So it will keep the infections you know, away. Calendula has a lot of very good property as a, 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 a I'm sorry, I don't hear. Okay, so it's really, the, the sound is not coming in, so it makes it a little bit difficult. Um, so we have a, a couple of approaches. We have the mother tincture of the calendula on, on the skin. We have internally the belladonna for this burn. And um, I'm not really sure the potency that we would be doing and how frequently. And uh, internally, I personally think that eating pineapple, which has brom bromelade, it has an enzyme that helps to uh, heal is, is also a, a good idea. Okay. Okay, so it's Belladonna 30C is the um, internal application, and we would need to know just the, the frequency for that. Um, so what we're talking about is this chronic exposure to ultraviolet radiation in combination with genetic predisposition, which is the single most important factor contributing to skin cancer. The UV radiation is believed to cause skin cancer by damaging the genetic information, the DNA within skin cells and by inducing oxidative damage. So it's almost like you're getting these rays of sun that's penetrating your le level of skin, that layer, outer layer of skin, and changing your own genetics. 
Um, okay, so just as a, a thought, I went and took a look at a world map and learned that Australia has one of the highest rates of skin cancer in the world. Each year, more than 1,850 Australians die from this, what is called, almost entirely preventable disease. And it can be prevented by certain steps that people take, certain behavioral actions. So, um, although, you know, I feel as if Dr. Nambison is, I'm holding him in my thoughts. He is here with me in spirit in, in um, my visualization, even though he's going to just channel this information right to me today. <laughs> and we will have to try again when our internet connection is, is improved. So the steps that you can take are to when you're going on an outing. You know, you, we're, we're, we're not going to be bundling up in um, coats and hats in that way, but you sometimes you'll see um, in the old paintings how people walked outside wearing an umbrella, using an umbrella, a sun umbrella, a parasol. How many people think about doing that today? It's a good idea because the amount of rays that are coming through that hole in the ozone layer are are coming down at a much harder rate, faster rate on. Uh, can do a lot of damage. So another option that you want to think about is when you plan to go out, when you plan to go out, do it at early in the morning and later in the afternoon, not in direct sunlight in midday. Um, so take your siesta, take your lunch break, go inside. Uh, if you can, sit under the trees. Also, take your bottled water or your can of your, your what is it, aluminum thermos, your thermos of water because we don't want to litter the, the world with plastic bottles. So the important thing is to keep hydrated. Dehydration occurs when more water is going to leave the body than you can put back in. That's going to happen in the sunlight where you're going to perspire. And so you need to keep well hydrated throughout the day and drink extra fluids, especially if you're exercising and you don't even realize it sometimes that you're losing all of this water from your body. Uh, when I went outside to do my gardening it, in 97 degrees, it didn't take but a few minutes before I was really perspiring. And anybody who knows that this is happening is probably naturally going to get thirsty, but you want to think about it as well as listen to your body. Limit the amount of alcohol and sugary drinks that you're taking in. Are you able to um, tell, tell us how people deal with it in India? Do they naturally know what to do in the hot summer heat? Are you able to, to uh, call? Yes. In this hot summer heat, uh, you know, uh, uh, it is very important to be hydrated. So you should take uh, uh, water and you have to be and take water regularly. At the same time, Okay, so, so, you know, oh, I'm sorry, I, I missed what you said. Okay, so, <laughs> you know, we, we carry on each time we have a show from far away. And I see that Dr. Nambison is in the chat on the Health In Show. We can get his messages this way. Also, I see Dr. Bob has tuned in. Uh, he is telling us that from 1950 to 2010, melanoma has gone up 5,000. Is that a, an actual percentage? Do we have that figure correct? Of 5,000% in the of carcinoma or melanoma during a 80-year lifespan. 
Oh, wait a minute. I, I missed 5,000% um, and I skipped a line. One out of five Caucasians will have basal cell carcinoma or melanoma during an 80-year lifespan. So that is, you know, you think about it, one out of five, and we think about people who, women who get breast cancer, one out of eight, that's a very high rate. Um, and regarding the dosage of belladonna, Dr. Nambison has indicated four times a day. Okay, so you're, you're with us here on the chat, and I will check in for you for your, your comments. And if anyone else is out there listening from India and is able to call into Computers 2K Voice and can tell us if it is typical that you protect your skin or anything about the rate of skin cancer in that area of the world, it would be good to know. And he, Dr. Nambison is indicating that a, one of the active ingredients in the plant calendula, which is marigold, uh, I, I don't think it's in the Dahlia family, <clears throat> um, has the lycopene. And lycopene, which is an antioxidant, we also find in our tomato plants, in our red plants, and therefore that's another good um, vegetable, or it's actually a fruit, for us to eat. So besides wearing our protective clothing that covers up as much skin as possible, wear a lightweight clothing that is plenty of ventilation. The fabric should be able to breathe. And just naturally people would realize that when they're wearing anything dark colored black, the sunlight gets absorbed into that color and you heat up a lot faster. That's why it's a great idea to wear that reflective white, light, bright color when you're out in the sunshine for a long period of time. Any other questions? Do you have any questions, Amnon? No, I was just thinking, you, you worked in Israel. Yes, I, I lived the in Israel. The Bedouins. Yes. Walk in the desert. Yes. Wearing black in the middle of the summer and they have layers. Oh my gosh. I, it, uh, somebody explained it once. Somebody, it works? It works. It works. So, yeah, that's how that's maybe, all they wear. Maybe growing up as a cultural thing that um, their body gets used. They must be sweating like pig. No. no, they're not. So, <laughs> uh, don't ask me. I, I'm, I, you know, you said that. Then it we don't know the reason me. why. So, but I guess culturally, people find ways of um, their habitat working in, in with their environment. Uh, they cover up all over. Uh, and, and since in America, people are used to shedding their clothing, <laughs> the, the, the scientists and the little people in the chemistry lab have created something called SPF 30, which is really high percentage of sunscreen. And it's very recommended by physicians and people who sell this product to put on lots of sunscreen 20 minutes before you go outdoors and every two hours afterwards. However, in the natural health world and alternative medicine, we have a lot of controversy about using sunscreen and that it should not be used for an extended period of time. I was reading recently about um, negative effects of sunscreen and that in actuality it was, and I don't have a link to that right now, but it is actually causing what it is trying to prevent because of the chemicals that are within it. Dr. Nambison tells us that there is a damage to the DNA and homeopathy can help people with constitutional remedies. This is really brilliant, Dr. Nambison, because when we started the show, I explained how this, the sun damage was actually changing the DNA. And so we might not think that we can repair something of that deep in, deeply ingrained in the body, but he recommends or says that he has used these basic remedies. One, calcarea carb, another one, lycopodium, sulfur, pulsatilla, and bromium. And one of the things that we just also mentioned was that the physicians and medical world tells us 
that if you're susceptible to injury by the sun from your in your lifetime hereditarily I would think that these must be why these constitutional remedies work because the people who might need calcarea like a podium, sulfur, pulsatilla, or bromium might have a sensitivity when they are out in the sunlight. Dr. Nambison, what about nature muriaticum? We think about persons um, who uh, need this remedy. Typically, they all of their life, they're extremely sensitive to the sun. Uh, they wear dark glasses to protect their eyes. That's another issue that we really must concentrate on um, protecting our eyes so that we don't get um, cataracts later in our life. So this, um, I'm curious about the constitutionality and if we are on a constitutional re remedy, perhaps that can protect us a little bit from the sunlight if we don't abuse ourselves in a way of sitting out for hours on end. Dr. Nambison has also provided a few other remedies for us to look at as supportive remedies, probably in acute situations, but he's mentioning now that the nature mirror is a very good remedy for people who are anemic, uh, so you would think that they might be slender, uh, and for weak school girls, typically weak school girls who are irritable, and we know it is a, one of the number one grief remedies. And you know, when you're when you're grief stricken, when you're depressed, the world really appears very dark. You you're, you um, you cannot really walk into the sunlight and, and feel. Uh, feel like you can absorb that light very easily. So I mean this is all theoretical and philosophical but nature muriaticum, these stoic people um, just can't take too much sun without uh, getting some problem with it. Also he's mentioned for us a few remedies that that are good to support the skin one is cantharis, which is wonderful for burns, any kind of burns. If you're in the kitchen cooking, if you're out on the, on the grill and you burn yourself, cantharis would be one that I would typically pull out of the jar in a gel and, and put it on my skin or even take it internally. Urtica urns for a stinging nettle. And then we have calendula and hamamillus. Those four remedies are plant remedies. Isn't that amazing that the plants naturally harbor some sort of protective energy within them that we can utilize uh, for ourselves to protect us from the sun. And those are all good both on the skin, on a tap topical or internally. This is a very interesting point of fact. Dr. Nambison has just indicated that in India, they send their patients out with a little dose of Glonine um, 30C in their pockets. And this is also to be taken during the summer months. So again, that would be probably a, cons a person's constitution would indicate that they might need that kind of a remedy as a preventative and curative to specifically sunstroke. So um, as we were saying, if you're out in the sunlight too many hours or for people who are susceptible even a short time, they can come down with sunstroke. Definitely put a, a hat, a broad brimmed, a wide brimmed hat on. You can even get the sombrero. a sombrero, little bells if you like. But there's the kind that we love to wear. It has flaps on the side and in the back. So it protects the back of the neck. So did you ever get out there and you found this great big ring of redness on a red, red neck. a red neck from the south? So <laughs> the other thing is that it's recommended, I would imagine, that you slowly acclimate your body to the summer sun. Don't go out there and think like just like you're oh today I'm going to be a power 
exercise and go out and run or, or do something. Um, and then you, when you come home from that exercise, your Charlie horse, your muscles hurt so badly that you don't want to go out again. That can happen. But in the same way, in the sunshine, if you go out and stay out too long without slowly building up your skin's melatonin, uh, melanin rather, that is the, the um, enzyme within the skin, that can help protect you as your skin slowly darkens. Um, Dr. Nambison has told us on the chat that in terms of the sunstroke and heat exhaustion, another remedy, homeopathic remedy, can be useful. And that one, he says, is gelsimium, which I have flowering perfume in my garden, the jasmine plant. I didn't bring some of that for you today, but the jasmine plant, he says, is for heat exhaustion. And that is fascinating information because I typically think of it as an influenza remedy and also a remedy for anticipation where there is weakness, dizziness, headache, vomiting, and heavy sweating. So this gelsimium, just like a plant would droop in the sun, in the, you know, it's, it's, it's dehydrated, it's missing its nutrients, it's missing its liquid content, and it needs to, to uh, it's very thirsty. And this plant would droop. You can just imagine that's the way a person might appear, this, this facial expression. And so this is a, it looks like a heavy duty remedy for dizziness, headache, vomiting, and, and this heavy perspiration. So this is dealing with a really bad response to sunlight and heat. Don't forget to wear your sunglasses to protect your eyes. And let's see, we're going to be, I wanted to make a note. People who go outside, like you see all those clouds in the sky and you think, I am so good. The sun's not going to get me. I'm protected. Wrong. Bzz. That sunlight goes right through those clouds, right onto you, right through the windows in your home. So you have a little bit of protection from uh, the UV glass in your car, in your home. That will protect you somewhat, but still you're going to get um, some effects from the sun. Even if it's a, a, a overcast day, the sky appears gray and you're going to go thinking I'm cool, the wind is blowing and I'm okay. Um, Dr. Nambison, do, do the folks out in India go, go to the ocean? Do they go to the pool? Do they get out there in the sunlight? Um, do they get exposure on their whole body to the sun? You can chat there and let us know. Besides taking glonine, um, which is a really a good stroke and heart remedy, uh, a, a bursting headache, I imagine, um, from the glonine, very, very close to the belladonna remedy. So if belladonna is not working, I would imagine the glonine might be working. So he's talking about fire burn and sunburn. Again, we, we keep coming back to calendula, uh, which is our marigold plant in the garden for these types of burns. And he says it really helps quickly. Yes, Dr. Bob, uh, he recommended using the mother tincture. So we're learning about these, these mother tinctures working very well as an application. Um, and, and on our other shows, Dr. Ottle has used recommended mother tinctures for internally. You're, you're thinking of something funny. Do you have a joke to tell well, us? Well, I mean, mother tincture cannot be at two places at the same time. I mean, she's either here or she's there. I mean, what do you do if she's not around? <laughs> Please, mother tincture, take, you, take me with you. Keep me in the car. Keep me in your pocket. That reminds me you should really have a kit with you in any emergency. <laughs> 
Ah, it's important because, you know, um, people are worried so much about their beauty, about their skin, about look, having smooth, clear skin. And Dr. Nambison indicates that uh, it helps to prevent scarring. So even if you get a scratch on your skin, we usually say calendula. Don't ever put the arnica on an open wound, but you take the calendula and put that on and it will help um, heal that skin naturally. You know, you can imagine how powerful all of these homeopathic remedies are if something that as strong as the skin, as strong as the sun. You know, Amnon, did you ever take a little magnifying lens mm -hmm. to a leaf and, and um, focus the sun's light and cause that? My son wrote, I love you, mom, once. <laughs> On, in a, on, on a leaf, he, he used it to etch in the leaf. And if that sunlight is directed at you, your skin is being etched. And that's why he's saying calendula is going to be really good. Um, I, the important factors about the SPF sunscreen to protect from the skin. Uh, first, most dermatologists advise that the sunscreen is only one factor in the defense against the sun and should not be solely relied on to protect the skin, particularly in the middle of the day. You've got to wear your protective clothing, your, your, your brimmed hat, your long sleeve. I know you're going to look like an idiot if you're not wearing a short sleeve. Um, and they, he says tight weaved clothing to protect from those UV lights. Um, and I'm still wondering if I've got this information correct about You'll need to apply one teaspoon of sunscreen to each segment of your body. So when you go to the, to the beach, you put some on your face, your arms, your legs, your face, and preferably it says 15 to 30 minutes. So, so some places say 20 minutes, other places say 15 to 20 minutes before. Okay, that's what the doctors will tell you. That's what you're going to read on the news. But almost half of the 500 most popular sunscreen products may actually increase the speed at which malignant cells develop and spread skin cancer because they contain vitamin A or its derivatives. The AOL News has learned through documentation and interviews with the Food and Drug Administration that there's, they've known for a long time about the potential danger for as long as 10 years without alerting the public. In their annual report to consumers on sunscreen, they say that only 39 out of the 500 products that they examined were safe and effective. So, and it is because of the hormone disrupting chemical called oxybenzone, which penetrates the skin and enters the bloodstream. So, take a note. The alarming disclosure says that retinol and retinol pal palmitate may speed up cancer that is used in sunscreen. Okay, we have some good news that the virgin coconut oil and add that to vitamin E and you can put that. You know, you can just take a scoop of that coconut oil that looks like a solid, um, high, it, what will we call it a fat, it's an oil. And there are people who are now taking spoonfuls of that directly as a daily regimen. I, don't, I haven't really done that. I love to, you can slather it on a piece of toast, but he says put it on your body and it's very good sunscreen. It's also extremely healing and good for everything in your body. Uh, people who have fungus problems use coconut oil. And Dr. Nambison tells us that the virgin coconut oil is a wonderful antimicrobial agent. Now, you know, I did mention earlier in the show using that white zinc. It is titanium dioxide also that is used as a sunscreen. But there's question, questions today about the nanoparticles and growing research that these nanoparticles can be absorbed into our skin and also cause health effects. So everything today is two sides of the story. We get one, this is going to be great, it's going to protect you, and another side of the story is going to tell us the damage and risk. So I don't think that we, you know, we are like one great big 
massive human guinea pig that we're constantly being tested about all of these um, products over decades of time. We're not told what's going on in the lab. We're not told precisely what kind of uh, results are going on with the experiments. We find out decades later when there's increases in cancer, increases in skin cancer and breast cancer and brain cancer. I mean, you can think about all the things that are in our environment and you, you, it's up to you to become educated and to determine what to do. Okay, so now uh, we have some talk in the, in the uh, chat here. Amnon's asking a question. Making a killing documentary? What's that? It's, it's, it's oh. uh, okay. So Dr. Bob says the Bedouins of the Negev Desert figured this out a millennia ago to cover the skin. So they were doing it. It's just dark. Maybe, I don't know, maybe they, maybe does it, does in the desert it gets really cold at night. So by absorbing all of that heat during the day, it, it keeps them warm at night. I don't know. No, I don't know. We, don't, we don't know the rationalization. If anybody has an idea, we would love to hear it. So exposing a child's skin to the sun can also pose a serious risk to health, both on the short term and the long term. Ultraviolet rays, part of the invisible light emitted by the sun, can cause sunburn, scarring, eye damage, and premature skin aging. The skin reddens in about two to, four, two to six hours after the UV exposure, and the burn further develops for the following one to three days. When your child gets a sunburn, it's that top layer of skin, that the epidermis, it becomes red, hard, and in severe cases, it blisters, and you know how you peel that skin right off in, in layers. The child may become lethargic and fatigued, also due to hydration. You need to keep them hydrated. The skin undergoes this process that we call apoptosis, the death of the cells. They're programmed to die. And it is thought that the body does this when the cells are damaged beyond repair. And that's why we can see the progression toward the malignant cancerous cells. The sunburn, is is it, if it is excessive, these dead cells can be shed in vast numbers. A child might cry out and don't, it doesn't want to be touched because of the stinging, hot, burning sensation that they get. It's a tingling, blistering pain that even can bubble with water. They will get a, a headache and uh, the skin is very tender, aching, and throbbing. We know for sure that throbbing sensation that is very highly related to belladonna. They can get the fever and chills and nausea and vomiting. Then you might think about that gelsimium with that weakness and fainting. Uh, some people could feel dryness and itching as the peeling occurs, as the skin is trying to repair itself. Do you want us to look at a YouTube? No, 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 that's for <clears throat> Okay. So okay, so um, we know that there is a range of this type of a sunburn, that it can be just slightly mild and it can turn copper toned and turn into your uh, golden skin, or it can go the other direction and you can lose that entire layer of skin and then you're exposed. Another thing that's really important that people need to know, if you're taking any kind of medication, some medications will actually exacerbate the effects of the sun. And it will say on the label, do not go out in sunshine. So if you're on chemotherapy, you cannot go out in the sun because you're, it, it's definitely going to affect your immune system, uh, the cancer cells in your body, how your body responds to the sunlight. Any other common ones? Other common ones such as ibuprofen and aspirin might be, they say it might be helpful for reducing pain early on, but you know, I'm going to say try your homeopathic remedies first. Uh, don't forget the aloe vera, your mother's plant that you take, you know, in the stores now they have these huge ones. You just get that, split it open, and put that cooling gel right on you. Uh, you know what? We didn't mention Apis mellifica. I wonder if that would be 
a remedy for um, burns because it is for inflammation and swelling. It is closely um, compatible or incompatible with belladonna, but it has similar symptoms. Uh, it is for edema and um, ascites. Would Apis mellifica be useful in the cases of sunburn? If anybody knows, let us comment on the chat. Uh, Dr. Bob has mentioned that ac actinic ketritosis, red scaly skin, is the first sign of precancer in any exposed place of skin. And the dissolution of the stratospheric ozone layer makes literally any prolonged exposure dangerous. And especially, you know, if you're in a mountaintop region, the um, atmosphere is much, much thinner. So if you live at a high altitude, you're going to get more sun exposure than if you're at the Dead Sea, where you're going to get the least amount of sun exposure. Okay? So that's another thought, besides changing your recipes where you're baking. <laughs> um, so um, that aloe vera is, is a good plant to use externally. If anybody knows of any other plants that will add valuable moisture and to prevent the dehydration and promote faster healing, let us know. Uh, we have a combination of milk and water. Some people dose themselves and, and dunk and, and maybe put a compress of part milk and part water onto the skin. And definitely, because you're, you're not going to want to do this anyway, avoid scrubbing it. Avoid scrubbing or shaving. You know, if you've got a sunburn on your face and you typically shave, what are you going to do? You're going to be in a lot of pain because that, um, that hair growth is going to come in through that burnt skin. So um, I'm, if anybody else has any ideas, let us know. Um, Veratrum viride is the remedy for dehydration from heat. Okay, Dr. Nambison, can you tell us possibly the difference between veratrum viride and veratrum album? Because we know that veratrum album is, is one remedy that is in our emergency kit, but most likely the lesser known veratrum viride would, might not be in the remedy kit. Would the other one work as well? Uh, so this is for a person, he says, that goes into shock with a small amount of sweating so that they're not able to perspire, which they're not able to, you know, the body's way of cooling itself off is perspiring, mm -hmm. like a plant respires. So we perspire and then the wind comes and cools us like a natural air conditioning. And this is why we lose all of our uh, water from our body and we are mostly composed of water. We've got to, we're, we're really thirsty. Okay, you've got something funny to say. No, no, I, I was, I mean, you're talking about you, the skin and all that and I'm, I'm going back to when I was growing up in the 50s in Israel. Every summer it was a, a big thing. Everybody was walking around. You couldn't touch anybody. You could. We would go to the beach and our parents would put on us uh, <laughs> Velveeta cream. It's not the cheese. <laughs> it was something oily. Okay. It was cream. It was white cream. Like and Crisco. Sort of. Okay. And and vegetable shortening. We'll get. Well, it wasn't. But I mean, okay. And when we get back home. Yeah. I mean, the next day nobody could touch you, and you would blister, and everybody. Why would did they put on you oil? Because that's to protect you from the sun. That's what it was. I mean, you know, back then. Ah. Uh. And well, we used to put on baby sun, oil. Every well, I don't think there was such a thing in Israel back then. It's like mineral but oil. But we would we would have my mom would come and, and actually pull the skin off and and in peel strips. it off and it wouldn't hurt. Oh. It would hurt in the beginning. And you know, you think about it. Every year, I mean, once it happens once, that's it. You could go to the beach and you could sit in really? the sun and nothing happened afterwards. It's the first, very first time in which you're exposed. Does that mean anything? I mean, that, that it happens once and not afterwards? And, and what, I mean, you you you, wood, cre I you created a layer of dead skin I don't know. I don't cells. have any, any uh, evidence of skin cancer, knock on wood. But, I mean, every year, probably from when I was three or four years old until maybe 12, 13, it would be the same thing. That, what does that do to your body? 
Probab yeah. Probably some people did end up with skin cancer I'm due sure. to this yeah. procedure, while other people, this is their naturally dark skin people. And that's another point that I would like to make that people think that just because you have dark skin, you're also protected from the sun. And this is not true. This is a fallacy and a misconception. Uh, a person with dark skin also has to take good care. You want me to? Oh, okay. So um, it is important to understand, Dr. Nambison says, the acute and chronic sun damage, frequent acute sunburn can lead to the chronic dermatitis and then becomes the precursor to skin cancer. So this is the, the frequent, you know, you have many longer months of sunshine in Israel yeah. than we do here. So it is natural that your body is going to acclimate to the sun. But remember, the ozone layer has changed all of that. That's, and that's, and, that's I, what I, was going to ask. and I assure you that there's a higher rate and somebody's going to have to do some research and pull it out of their hat. How much the increase in skin cancer has risen in areas, uh, desert areas, on uh, the Middle East, on places where you see a lot of sunshine. Um, another little bit for the little babies out there, uh, you know, you go put the baby out in the carriage and they get prickly heat rash. If anyone has some recommendations about that, they have immature sweat glands and aren't able to get rid of all the sweat that they produce. Which, is, which can cause a heat rash if they are exposed to this warm weather, if they are overdressed or excessively bundled up, and then they have a fever. So this is something, you know, those little prickly rash things, it almost looks like hives. And so again, I would say we're going to go back to the basic remedies that Dr. Nambison mentioned earlier on, and that would be up at the top, Cantharis, Urtica urns, Calendula, and Hamomilus. I didn't say very much about hamomilus today. That's witch hazel, our lovely witch hazel plant that my grandfather used to use. And um, that plant can is, is specifically for people who have um, varicose veins. But we know from Dr. Nambison that it is also supports uh, this issue of sun poisoning or, or sun toxicity to the body. And also, it, it would appear that if your little baby, your infant, is getting these sun um, rashes, prickly heat rash, that calcarea carb is one of the basic fundamental constitutional remedies to help children with their development, with their bones, with their growth. Calcarea carb is a good remedy all around, as well as lycopodium sulfur pulsatilla. Bromium I don't typically think of for um, little infants. So I don't know where that fits in in terms of um, age-related constitutions. We've got in the, in the notes here, Dr. Nambison says that Rus toxicondrin, that's um, a remedy typically used for poison ivy, poison oak, uh, sensitivity to allergies, which is his specialty, that uh, Rus tox would be would come into play for the prickly rash, heat rash. And also he says that hamamillus, that witch hazel, is an astringent. And if I've used it as a teenager growing up, uh, when there, you have blemishes, you take, you dip the cotton ball into the witch hazel and you apply it to your skin to dry it up. And that's why it's an astringent. Uh, he also mentions that for prickly heat rash, thank you, Dr. Nambison, that besides the rustox, you might think about the belladonna, which is the purple nightshade plant, or the silicea, silica. That's the only one that we've mentioned today uh, that is really in a mineral realm as opposed to the plant realm. Silica, we know, is that desiccant that we find in packaging, that little packet that says, do not eat this in your vitamin bottles. That's the silica but taken as a homeopathic potentized remedy. It is extremely powerful. It's good for shy, weak little kids. Um, they might appear to be scrawny with a large belly. Um, they usually can have a fair skin and a large head. These kids could use the support of that silica remedy. You have a question about it? Um, dark? So it's not uh, 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 poison? Silica? 
homeopathic if you take the crude silica, which we use to make glass, you're going to poison yourself. Okay. It's a danger. But but if you take a potentized remedy of silica, then it's going to be very helpful. So Dr. Nambison is also telling us that dark-skinned people get skin cancer due to immune suppression. This is fascinating. We're going to have to get more information about that. How do they have immune suppression? Um, what is causing that immune suppression? He also tells us that silica is known to boost the cellular immune system. So, I mean, you, it wouldn't even harm anybody to take the uh, Schussler cell salts, which is a potency of a 6x of silica, even on a daily basis as a support for their skin, for um, irritation to the skin, to, uh, he says, Bob, Dr. Bob says that sand is 99% silica. Well, we're at the beach. It's going to be good. Uh, the immune suppression is due to steroids. Now, I, I'm not really sure. Um, when would the, uh, the dark-skinned people be getting the, the steroids? Is there a reason for that? Are they, I guess, a, if they're taking prendazone, because this is your specialty of uh, allergic reactions, allergic response and typically allopaths when Western medicine physicians will give some sort of a steroid to suppress the immune system from responding from inflammation from reactivity and therefore um, the silica he's saying is a good immune booster that's fascinating I want to make a very important note that everything that we talk about on the show is educational informational I make a disclaimer that you always see your physician for taking any kind of medicine, even homeopathic medicines, that you want to be sure you're doing the right thing. In an emergency, these remedies are really harmless. They can really just help. Uh, steroids are used for people with organ transplants and also in AIDS. So there are a number of reasons, and we know that um, in Africa, there are many people who have HIV AIDS, and therefore, what a, what a great concept that they're on all of these immune suppressive drugs, and uh, homeopathic silica can, can be a boost to their immune system. And this knowledge is really important, you know, uh, talk about it, let other people know any kind of thing about this, and, and give us a call. You'll be able to contact Dr. Nanambison through his website if you also contact homeopathyworldcommunity at gmail.com and, and call me, contact me. Um, I'll be very happy to transmit any communications to him if you have questions. <clears throat> okay, so um, we've covered quite a bit about the sun, about its effect on our skin, about its effect on our eyes potentially. You know, you can get sun blindness uh, from being out in the sun. You can uh, damage the retina, the back of the eye, so that you're gonna have permanent damage. You wanna protect them. Um, that hat is always good. Sunglasses with a good protective layer of UV protection is good. Uh, we talked a little bit about stroke. Uh, stroke can affect not only adults, but it could affect children. So this is important to know. Maybe in another show we will go ahead and talk a little bit more extensively about stroke, heat stroke, sunstroke, heat exhaustion. We talked about the skin's aging from just too much sun. Turning like leather. Turning like leather, that's right. It will be, you know, you've seen it. And, and you don't have to look like an alligator. Um, so... Uh, I will be happy to listen for any questions, comments, calls in the future. Get on there. This, this is supposed to be your show. Uh, this is supposed to be you talking to me. I know it's most difficult due to, um, due to the Internet connection. And, and I really, truly, wholeheartedly apologize to Dr. Nambison that his sound was um, not, not a good connection at all and it made that difficult um, it's possible that I can do a special talk with him 
and uh, put that up as an audio. Because, yeah. okay. So, um, unless there are any other questions, we're going to be closing the show today. Uh, you know what, Dr. Dr. Nambison, what do we take when we're feeling <laughs> disappointed and disheartened? I, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna send you my sun rays, my my love. Uh, I, you know, love heals everything. There will be other opportunities. You, this has not happened only for you. On the last show with um, Dr. Ajay Yadav, the same thing happened. And you know, until the internet can improve, we're gonna keep coming across these problems of communication across the airwaves due to the atmosphere due to satellite connection, due to uh, the, the, the satellite, what are they, towers that don't come in really strong. Um, your information was really, really, it, it was really important because we, I heard your voice through the, um, his, his connection is 2 MBPS. That's like nothing. 2. No, 2 is, is that, good. Oh, That's is that good? Down or up. Oh, oh, we, oh, they're having a monsoon. Okay, so monsoon means really difficult. You know, what have we learned here? The sun can get through the clouds, but the um, what? What kind of the waves do we use for these radio waves for the internet? There aren't. There aren't any. How do okay. we? It's all cable. Oh, Where, underground. There's probably. Okay. Um, microwave. Okay. In certain places. Okay, so. I want to let people know that besides the Monday Health In Show, which we do our best to project to you and get receive your in, input, we also have on Wednesday morning Dr. Adil Chimthalawala Kasim calling in from India to the Blog Talk Radio Show, and he is a gem. We have been studying all of the symptoms within our chest, uh, dealing with every organ, the, the ribs, the, the bone structure, the muscle tissue, the heart, the lungs, the mammae, everything, and how it affects our totality, um, how he uses uh, these rubrics from Kent's repertory in his clinic to know what remedies to use in acute emergencies, in chronic illness whether it is because he's a cardiologist we we are learning so much from him and his show has gotten up to the first page of blog talk radio and the health shows thank you um on on thursday we're going to have alan phillips back at noon talking about vaccinations and your rights vaccinations can put a stress on your immune system so we want to learn a little bit more about that okay What's on deck next week? We are in the process of figuring that out. What we wanted to talk about with Dr. Deepak Sharma is um, high blood pressure, uh, tension, um, hypertension, and because this is a big problem all around the world. But um, yeah, there is big news about vaccinations, Dr. Bob. Uh, I sent you an email this morning, Dr. Mercola has on his website that uh, in Britain, they have said that there is definitely a connection between MMR and autism, possibly many other childhood illnesses, ADHD. What do you take for being old? Um, I guess a drop of sunshine, a smile on your face. What? Happy birthday, Dr. Bob. Just turned 60 today. <laughs> okay, so we love you, everyone. We'll see you next week on Monday at 11 Eastern Time, and that's 8.30 in Calcutta, India. New Delhi. Oh, New Delhi also. Okay. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. Our weekly lineup of call-in programs includes Computers 2K Now with Amnon Nissan, Sundays 9 a.m. to noon, Health In with Debbie Brooke, Mondays 11 a.m. till noon, 
The Scope of Things with Marilyn Shannon, Mondays, 7 to 8 p.m. Breaking Free with Marilyn Shannon, Mondays, 8 to 9 p.m. Reawaken Your Brilliance with Julie Seibert, Wednesdays, 8 to 9 p.m. And if you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it at www.nissancommunications.com.